Late last year, the Coca-Cola Foundation got in contact with us about an exciting campaign. It wasn't to launch a new product. It was for an initiative we had no idea that they were involved in. Ever since we picked up a camera and started this channel, we had two goals. One, get out there and explore the world whilst inspiring others to do so. And two, make a difference. Over the last three years, we've mixed exploring our planet and lending our time to volunteering across the globe. We've helped with releasing sea turtles in Costa Rica to assisting with getting pandas off the endangered list in China. A love of animals in their environment has been a major passion of ours, from above ground to the depths of the ocean. For those watching who haven't been brought up in Australia, yes, we are very stereotypical and you basically learn to swim before you walk if you grow up here in Australia. So as you can see, this is probably where we got our love for the ocean and especially for diving. We did our very first scuba dive right here in the Great Barrier Reef with Jess's parents and that actually inspired us to go and get scuba certified and we achieved that goal. As an Australian, it is so amazing to be able to say that the Great Barrier Reef is the first place we ever died, it still brings a smile to my face. So you guys are now probably wondering what we are doing here in Cairns and what this has got to do with the Coca-Cola Foundation. There may be as many as 12 million starfish currently on the, on the reef. Starfish, when they're in plague proportions, will eat their way through all of the hard coral um, that's in their path. In the same way that a locust plague um, will eat its way through all the vegetation in its path. These outbreaks are being driven by a number of factors. One of the most dominant factors is nutrients coming off the land. Uh, these nutrients feed phytoplankton growth, which is a food source for the baby crown of thorns. The nutrients are coming primarily from farming operations. They're coming through fertilizer runoff. All of these uh, are dominated by farming activities. Coral cover in the central and southern part of the Great Barrier Reef is likely to be reduced to well below 10%. So we've just come out to an aquarium so we can get an up close look at these juvenile crown of thorn starfish. Hi, I'm Annie Taylor and I'm an educator at uh, Cairns Aquarium. So we have here the crown of thorn starfish which naturally does occur in this region. There are other factors helping these guys grow to great sizes and they're eating coral at a much faster rate causing a lot of uh, damage, about 50% of the past damage in the last 10 years or so. Farming runoff's a really big one, so the chemicals in the water are causing algal blooms, allowing these creatures to then find more food. I mean, no predators and great food. Breeding occurs and it's just getting to a rate that we can't control. It's crazy to finally see these juvenile crown of thorns starfish and then hearing how much damage they're doing to the reef. Good morning guys, we've just woken up to an absolutely breathtaking day here in the Whit Sundays. We actually flew up last night so we can come and check out the reef for ourselves and see what condition it's in. So the crown of thorn starfish has actually devoured up to 40% of the reef's coral cover today. And so today we're going to be heading out to the reef to check it out to see what damage they've done. Wow, this is so sad. Seeing all the effects that this is having on the reef, 
This is just such a special place for us and seeing it disappear like that is so disheartening. In the future, we want to take our kids to come and see the Great Barrier Reef, just like Jess's parents took us out to see it for the first time. Okay guys, there is still hope for the reef. Today is where we find out about the plan, and that plan is Project Catalyst. So since 2009, Project Catalyst has partnered up with over 70 local sugarcane growers here in Queensland, the Australian government, WWF, and the Coca-Cola Foundation, all to help protect the reef. Now they've actually put us in contact with some of the local sugarcane growers here in Queensland. So today we're hiring a car and going on a little road trip, driving out to see and hear some of these farmer stories and learning about their passion for Project Catalyst. Trying to wake up from a dream Hey, the big it's young. harder than it seems We found the big mango flying all around. Banana, so welcome to Bloomsbury We just made it to Taronga where, where are you going Jess? Inside a simple song Alrighty guys, we just made it out to Bloomsbury, out here in the Mackay region of Queensland, population 598. Over the next few days, we are going to be meeting with three different farmers across northern Queensland to hear their stories. Hey, you. Yeah, nice to meet you, Tony. Hi, Hi, Hi Nice Steven. to Hi. meet you. Hey, Frank, how you doing? Steven, isn't Yes, it? nice Frank, to meet hey, you. Yeah. Classic rural Australia. Just got a crocodile in the lagoon there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you? Take a bite of that. <laughs> <laughs> Jess is going to go and uh, give this tractor a bit of a spin. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> These catalyst growers are innovators who have incredible ideas to make a change towards sustainability. My name's Sonny Jefferson, live at Bloomsbury. We've been farming here since 1921. Yeah, my name's um, Frank Mujiga. I farm in air. It's a part of the Burdick and Shire. I'm Ray Zamora, farm in the Tully Murray Valley in the tropics of North Queensland. I mainly farm sugarcane. Project Catalyst was formed by Coca-Cola Foundation and WWF and NRM groups 10 years ago. It's our 10th anniversary this year. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been with Catalyst now? Four years. Oh cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been with Project Catalyst now for seven years. Project Catalyst is, is an amazing, wonderful network of like-minded growers. Um, yeah, given the support from Coke and, and WWF to enable us to do that. Yeah, it's amazing, brilliant. Yeah, I love the Great Barrier Reef. We go out there fishing. There's always plenty of fish to catch and I want that to keep happening for generations and generations to come. It's something worth protecting and fighting for. Well, we, we look this way, 0.2 kilometres, Alva Beach is just there. So mm -hmm. that's how close oh, I wow. am wow. to the, yeah, well, to the Great Barrier Reef, realistically. Yeah. If I do have any runoff, that's what I'm going to debate. Um, if it does run off, well, that's how close I am, you yep. know, to yeah. the whole reef system. Or so, and you know, I went to Dreamworld last year and um, there's a family from Sydney and of course I copped it about the reef and then all of a sudden I showed him pictures of my recycle pit, the species of fish, the amount of fertiliser I'm reduced by. He was like, we don't hear about that in the media. We're just getting ready to start planning. Have you ever been inside a machine as big, Jess? So I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is Big crazy. Truck. Farmer Jeff. I'm glad we've stopped near the crocodile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the core message of Umbrella Catalyst is constant improvement, uh, making things better, um, having a more sustainable property, uh, and farming more environmentally, because everything we do is the focused on reducing off-site impacts. On my farm alone, I've practically reduced up to about 3,000 units of nitrogen. The main focus was nitrogen reduction. So it means cover crop, we use it for the nitrogen to yep. try and reduce the nitrogen, the artificial nitrogen we put in the ground. So that when you get the heavy rainfall events, you don't get the off-site movement of the material. So you can see there's been basically no movement of soil here at all. Are oh, we going inside? Yeah. Oh my hell. Snakes. <laughs> Whoa. It's like through the jungle, isn't it? Yeah. All my nitrogen stored in there in an organic form. Good farming practices. You can get the lovely, beautiful dirt full of roots. Because without healthy soil, we haven't got 
healthy planet, we haven't got healthy people. Yeah, massive changes to the to what we're doing that might impact the reef. So the thing is, we our water is actually metered. Mm -hmm. So it means we've got to manage our resource properly. If we go over our allocation of water, we've got to pay double for the amount of water. So we've got to watch every drop we got. This is what they call a G dot. Um, this is like a moisture monitoring probe. So it eliminates the guesswork on when to water your sugar cane. Like if we over water, we end up washing the nitrogen out and we don't want to see it gushing out down the roadways and all that, like flowing into creeks that flow into the reef. Yeah, I've got some uh, skip row trials in, which involves planting every second drill of cane. Basically halved our input costs, but it can grow up to 70% of normal production. Yeah, as the water's going off my farm, I've done everything I can to make it the best pristine quality it can be. Mm. We're, we're creating the conversations, we're, we're having an impact, we're making the changes, so. Go and tell the world, like you guys coming to visit my farm is actually wonderful and you know, people get on there and say, oh, these growers are having a go, which is a great thing. Hey, Tell thanks for the time. Yeah, thanks for you coming so anyway. Yeah, that was, thank, <laughs> thank you, you so for, much. Thanks so much for letting us come and anytime and chat yeah, and learn more so about much. it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>